guys, welcome to Behind Tush Doors. I am Rochelle Richard. And I am Jenna Lewis. And we both grew up in fundamentalist churches and are here to share our deconstruction with you. So, uh, in case any of you have listened to our previous episodes, Brittany was mentioned in our third episode, the second part of our purity. Um, and so, yeah, she's already technically made it her first appearance. <laughs> yeah, this is so, the first, like, actual debut. Yeah. Did you? So welcome. Hello, thank you. Now you guys get to put a voice with the name. And there you go, <laughs> exactly. So, you are here to talk to us about being raised as a Jehovah Witness. Yes. Is it Jehovah's Witness or Jehovah Witness? So, oh, question number one. Question. <laughs> is there more than one Jehovah? <laughs> So it is actually, you know, Jehovah is God's name. So it's actually Jehovah's, like apostrophe oh, okay. S. We're his witnesses. So we go out and witness to the world. So oh, okay. Jehovah's witnesses. Okay. Do you, I just want one question. No, go for it. Do you uh, get offended by the Jehovah's Witness memes? No, I think. <laughs> Are th- are Jehovah Witnesses the ones in the Lord doors? Lord Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's that one. I knew you said that one. Do you have time to talk about Jehovah Witnesses? <laughs> That's that one. <laughs> yes, I get offended. No, I'm just sorry. Like, <laughs> I'm just so oh my God. No, I actually don't get offended. Uh, but yes, the Jehovah's Witnesses are the ones that go door to door every Saturday, every weekend almost every day so yes wow Mm -hmm. that's crazy so you were your parents were my parents are are okay so Mm -hmm. are and are do you have siblings i do so i have a brother and i have two sisters um my well i have two brothers two sisters so my one my one of my brothers does currently practice okay Um, and my uh, two sisters and my other brother do not okay and does that cause friction with your family? At this point, no. It no. Did it at one point? I mean, absolutely. Like, you don't practice your parents' religion. There is obviously heartburn. I mean, we still hear about it to this day. Right. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I feel like that's, I didn't know one, the, one of the episodes we were saying how we just kind of don't even talk about it with our parents because yeah. we know it brings them pain. And so, yeah, it's yeah, so hard. My parents, especially my mom, she's gotten to the point now where if she knows you know, if she's crossed the line or if she's brought up something, I'm just like, all right, mom, like I'm done. And I won't talk to her for a little while. And mm-hmm. she knows. So now she's, I've almost trained her to the point where. Set boundaries. Yeah. If you bring it up, we're done here. Mm-hmm. Immediately, no, I've got to go. I love that. That's Both of you are so good at the boundary setting. <laughs> I need a lesson and a crash course because I just ghost. I feel <laughs> like it's after a lot of hurt and <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so tell, so admittedly, I don't know much about Jehovah's Witness, Jehovah's Witness. And so, so I would love to know more just in general about what the reli- religion entails. I know right briefly, right before we started this, I said, you know, separate from Christianity. And you said, well, it's a part of Christianity. And I'm like, okay, lesson one already mm-hmm. happened. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So would you tell us a little more about that? Yeah. So Jehovah's Witnesses, they, they do consider themselves Christians. So mm-hmm. they, um, you know, believe in Bible practices. The biggest difference between Jehovah's Witnesses and other religions are the the Trinity. So I know the um, fa- the Holy Ghost, Father, the Son. I guess the mm-hmm. Trinity. Yeah, like yeah. Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in that. Okay. So that's probably the main difference. They also don't believe in an actual burning hell. So when Jehovah's Witnesses pass away they you know actually die in a beard or whatever and they just their bodies are just in the ground until uh they are resurrected and then they come back and live what is it they say on paradise on earth okay i think that's that similar interesting <clears throat> that's similar to christianity though the, or I say Christian. I know I'm saying Christianity mm-hmm. separately. You know, I yeah. was raised in, well, cults then non-denomination. <laughs> you were raised <clears throat> Pentecostal and non-denomination. Um, so, but they also, I they do believe in a burning hell, but they, they don't. They do believe like the resurrection, just kind of like what you were saying of all the saints or whatever, and then yeah. So that's similar. 
Um, and so if you are, is if there's no hell, is there like a punishment at all? Or is it like you die and you're gone if you don't go to paradise? Yeah, so that's basically it. If you uh, die, then you don't have the hope of being resurrected. Oh, so if you're doing, I get what you're like, saying. You know, not a Jehovah's Witness or you've not accepted that truth, mm -hmm. then you are basically just deemed to not be resurrected. And are there any rules that differ from just kind of mainstream Christian? I, I say mainstream is, you know, they're saying no, no sex before marriage and no, you know, but the typical ones we hear, um, you know, don't lie, don't steal, pay ties. Is there any big thing that differs? Um, you know, for example, like Pentecostal wears like the long skirts mm -hmm. and that's not true of all sects of Christianity. So is there anything major different in like the rules, if you will? Uh, I don't know. I think I, so do women are allowed to preach in your church? Well, it depends actually on the church. So our, the church I was raised in, yes, but many, the answer is no. Yeah. Okay. So women, one, aren't allowed to have any higher power in, you know, Jehovah's Witness. They can't be an elder over the church. So basically for for that they can't have that that next level so you know the pat the women pastors mm -hmm. or things like that you don't see that in jehovah's witness also they're very strong in um baptism and then being disfellowship so if exactly. you're so if when you're baptized you're ultimately you know giving your life over to jehovah and if you do something that is deemed inappropriate you can be uh, disfellowshipped and basically what that means is they'll completely stop talking to you, cut like off all, yeah, basically. And you still have to like go to the kingdom hall. You have to sit in the very back of the kingdom oh, hall. Oh, wait, you still go? Oh, oh, that's the only way that you show like you, you still want to be there. Is oh that you gosh. have to like, you have to one, like really tell and, and go in full detail about like what you did. Oh, why oh my gosh. You, oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> why you did it and i mean details and then at that point you still have to prove like you want to be there so you go to the kingdom hall for every meeting you sit in the back i'm sorry i don't know what a kingdom hall is oh okay so you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> so sorry to stop you is that like the same as like a sanctuary or yeah is so that... it's basically there it's basically their church Okay. Uh, so there's Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses all over the the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's multiples in every single city. So <clears throat> country even. So yeah. So is the Kingdom Hall like the one, is it like the church is like, oh, I belong to this church. Is it like I belong to this Kingdom Hall? Uh, not, not necessarily really? like you belong, but you're assigned to one that's closest to your home because there you're are so. Assigned. You don't get a pick? Uh, no, not really, because there's so many, mm -hmm. there's so many Jehovah's Witnesses, they have to like be almost assigned to what Kingdom Hall is closest to them, so that not all of them go to one. I didn't realize there's this many. I didn't either. Honestly. Oh my gosh, yes. That's crazy. But like, how do you become a member? Because like, can you, can anybody off the street just like, if they see like, oh, there's the Kingdom Hall. Can they just like can they come in into service? service? Absolutely, yeah. they welcome it. I mean, oh, you think okay. about it; they literally well, they, go, door to, go door. to the door to yeah. door. I would assume they welcome they people. They go door to door, welcoming people. I was walking through the airport, and they had like this whole like table set up, like welcoming people to come and talk to them and inviting them to the Kingdom Hall. I mean, I, I will say, any Jehovah's Witnesses that I've met, either a at my door or b, <laughs> like I've worked with a few, and they, they've always been like a overly like kind and generous and very like friendly so yeah. i feel like that's kind of a trait of the religion itself a little bit yeah, yeah that's interesting so uh were, were your parents always jehovah's witness or no. did they the like converts? they like switched over and how like how was your childhood before they became it and then did it like change drastically like as soon as they that's a good question got into the the hall? I don't know. The <laughs> religion? I don't know. Yeah. So my mom was actually raised in multiple religions. Like she practiced multiple religions. She practiced being Baptist. Uh, she was even Catholic. She practiced multiple religions. And my dad did not uh, practice any at all. So when they got married, 
Uh, one day, someone came door to door and started talking to my mom. And my mom just got really invested in it. And she started making my dad go. And we were all born into the religion. So we didn't oh, know anything You didn't different. know it before. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And so does your dad participate because of your mother now? Or is it something that he also truly is invested in? No, he is absolutely, truly invested in it as well. Okay. Interesting. That's a good question. Yeah, because like I, I remember doing during COVID, your mom's like not going door to door. They were like sending out letters. Yeah, so right? they hand write letters. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. <clears throat> they hand wrote letters um, inviting people to come to the Kingdom Hall. And then they also um, started doing phone calls. On to they are doing the Lord's work. <laughs> they are doing it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. So how does one become a Jehovah's Witness? Is there... I, I know for Christians, they it kind of differs depending on which which sect, right? Yeah. For non-denomination, they usually say you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Like, yeah. pray the prayer, the sinner's prayer, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and then baptism is another part of that. Um, what about Pentecostals? Is it any different or is that the same? Um, so a lot of times after, like, on Sundays after the pastor will, like, say his word, like, preach or whatever, mm-hmm. um, they'll do, like, an altar call. Where they'll be like, if anyone wants to be saved, like, come up and we'll pray with you. And they're like, if anybody wants to join the church, come up and we'll, like, join you. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much all you have to do is just, like, go up there. And, and that's it. Do you have to pay yeah. a fee? You have to pay your, yeah, you do, essentially. You do? <laughs> we have to pay your dues to the yeah. church, you know. But. Yeah, it hasn't come out yet, but we have a financial episode. It's like, half of it's about the dues, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, that's so, going to be awesome. You don't have to pay for non-denomination. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, they may sell you a ticket to their own service. But oh, they're definitely going to do that. And call wow. it a concert. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. So, tell us, so what about Jehovah's Witness? So, you actually have to be baptized into being a Jehovah's Witness. So, you can go to the kingdom hall you can and go you know door to door you know with someone that's baptized you can you know attend to all the meetings you can do all of that but you're not really considered a jehovah's witness until you're baptized, until you're actually baptized. well that, that's the same for catholicism so i i talked on one of the episodes that, that that my whole extended family is all catholic very devout catholics um and that's it's the same for them you can't receive any of the any of the first sacrament is baptism so you can't receive any of the other ones including like taking communion until you've been baptized Mm -hmm. so it's very similar um and so so when you're baptized what does what does that hold you i see this look on your face she's got this big smirk i'm like i feel like we have so much tea coming here just like a dip in the water oh tell us tell us we're here for tea let's back it up okay so first growing up jehovah's witness that's really your community like Mm -hmm. you did not get to hang out with worldly people so Mm -hmm. if you weren't you know going to the kingdom halls you weren't baptized jehovah's witnesses those weren't other family members they were considered worldly so we could not hang out with them they were considered a worldly world so i there were no outside friends outside of friends that were jehovah's witnesses Mm -hmm. so if that was my community then part of being in that community was you know becoming baptized So at about 15 or 16, I had, you know, my friend group and, you know, different kingdom halls and, you know, we would hang out and a lot of my friends were like, oh, my parents or my grandparents, they won't allow us to hang out with you anymore because you're not baptized yet. Oh, so is there a typical age that kids get baptized? No, no, there's not a typical age. Like I've seen as young as like seven, eight, nine and as old as, you know, 50, 60, mm-hmm. 70. So there's not really an age, but at that time, there were a lot of, you know, 15, 16, 17 year olds in, you know, the Kingdom Hall and their parents had a very strong hold on them and how to get, you know, wanting to get baptized. So a lot of them were getting baptized at this early age. Mm-hmm. And so when my friends started ultimately like cutting me off, I was like, oh, okay, I you know, like I want my friends back. I gotta get baptized. Like mm. I started liking this guy, and his grandmother was like, no, you can't hang out with her. She's not baptized. Oh, and oh I'm my like, god! That's okay, crazy. like I really like him, so I want to, you know, he felt pressure. Hang out with him, yeah. yeah. So I I went home and I'm like, mom, dad, like I want to get baptized. And they're like, why? And I'm like, mm, I want to hang out <laughs> with my friends. 
just, but you know, you can't really say that. And I'm like, yeah. I'm really, you know, I'm one to accept, you know, Jehovah in my life. Like, it's time. And so you go through like four, there's elders in the congregations. And you go through like four basically interviews. So the elders come to your house like once a week for four weeks. <laughs> and like, okay, this is a process. <laughs> yes. And so they basically like give you, like they ask you like interview questions about the Bible and you have to be able to answer these questions. So it's like a test. It's almost like a test. Yeah. That's so crazy. So I'm like fumbling through these tests. Like, I don't really know. Like, I just want to hang out with my friends. So I'm like answering the questions as best that I can. And then I get to like the last one. It's obviously the hardest one. So half the questions I can't answer and I just like break down crying. <gasps> oh no, that's so <laughs> sad. <laughs> and so the elder's like, well, why are you crying? And I'm like, I, I have to lie. And I'm like, it's just because I love, you know, Jehovah so oh much. And I God. want this so you really bad. You really just want to hang out with your friends. But deep down inside, it's like, I and just want to kill a boy. <laughs> It's okay. We've all I done things for Dick too. Right. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> like I just want to kick it with the homies. <laughs> and so, like, my parents like pull him aside, and he's like, you know, she's not ready. And my mom wanted it so bad because she's like, oh, like I just want my children to be baptized and accept Jehovah. Like, and so she kind of just pushed, like, she's ready. She's ready. She really wants it. So, 15 years old, and I get baptized. So they let you pass, even though your dad mm -hmm. said she wasn't, you weren't ready? Yeah, well, my dad was like an elder. It was like a whole thing. So yeah, they let me. They they basically they just, just said, okay, yeah, it's okay. a go. You're, so your dad was an elder. Mm -hmm. So you, she's another first family here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All three of us. Crazy. Um, okay, sorry. I never did. <laughs> so after you get, you see, we get baptized. And what does that actually they dip you? look yeah. like? So you basically have, so Jehovah's Witnesses have like these conventions and the assemblies where they basically get, you know, 20 congregations together for like this weekend and they do like this big three day like convention. And so like I waited for that. I was like, you know, this is my moment. Like I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the three day convention. Like, you about your moment. <laughs> like forgets to wear a bra <laughs> comes up no, with her white no. shirt on <laughs> but they wait until like the last day so it's like sunday and they give like this really grand like you know talk and then they like come, you come out in this white shirt and black shorts and they just dip you and then you know they ask you two questions you answer the questions they dip you what and questions? You're like, oh my god i have no you idea know, oh, yeah. they ask questions in my church they too. ask questions in mine too. it's like do you like it's like something along the lines of like do you promise to live by the word and trust god or something like that all right, so for for I know for at least non-denomination ones, like you have to have first accepted Jesus, like yes. in the sinner's prayer type yes. thing, mm -hmm. and they'll ask you that. Too. Have you accepted Jesus Christ yeah, as your yeah. Lord and Savior? You say yeah. yes, and then they will also you something about the baptism. But it's also part. weird because they're like the congregation. They're like, do you the, the congregation like <laughs> agrees with to them hold or something them accountable? Yeah, it's weird. So weird. <laughs> But it, it so okay, so you you get dipped, and you mm -hmm. said what what did you say? And they ask you two questions. Mm -hmm. Then what? And That's so it. like afterwards, every like we go out to dinner. It's like it's this like whole thing. thing. It's like this whole thing. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm baptized. And then like all of a sudden, like my mom like flips the script, and she's like, okay, like you be ready every Saturday. Like you're going out in field service, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, field Saturday? service is like, that door to door? Yeah, that's door to door. I'm like every Saturday and she's like yeah you committed to like spreading Jehovah's word that's like, part of I being committed bad. to like, hanging with the homies <laughs> <laughs> like, committed to one thing <laughs> and so then it just started to get so much so just to give you guys a rundown Sunday we would have our um you know basically our Sunday or Sunday school so it was you know you go every Sunday and then Monday we had um like a Bible school so they basically divided the congregation up into smaller groups and we had to go to you know that particular person's house and do like a whole Bible study as a group so we would gotcha. call it like a small group. yeah yeah Tuesdays was a free day Wednesday we had family Bible study 
Thursday we had theocratic what, school. I'm sorry, what is what's family Bible study look like? Like it was basically just a, a smaller version of like the small group. Like we picked a but particular multiple families. Top, no, just our family. Your own family. Oh, so, yeah, okay. Just our family. So then we had our personal family Bible study on Wednesdays. And then we had to go back to the Kingdom Hall on Thursday to do like a theocratic school, which was basically teaching us how to go door to door. Oh. Like how to like knock on doors and what to say. And we basically had to get up and do role plays and stuff. <laughs> Stop. Okay. I, we're going to have to circle back to the school because no I need way. to know more about this. That's uh. so, can you imagine like, this is how you knock on the door. <laughs> Not, what was it like physically? Like how you knock on the door. <laughs> but like you would get a sign. So, like every week you would get a sign. So, like you're going to do a talk. And so you you'd, like, they'd give you a subject and then you'd have to role play what it looked like if someone answered the door mm. and you basically, you know, giving you like talk tracks mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So can, can you go through the rest of the week? We're going to definitely circle yep. back to the yeah, school yeah, night. For okay. sure. <laughs> and so then Fridays was another free day. And then Saturday mornings we had to get up and go to the, um, go door to door and then saturday night we had to prepare for sunday's watchtower so literally oh, our wait, 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 what's watchtower uh so jehovah's witnesses have publications called the watchtower it's very like book? Um, yeah yeah the little pamphlet oh yeah 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 and so that's what, what they we bring door to door okay so, and oh, so we gotcha. would do we would study it on sundays as a congregation to prepare ourselves to go out in the ministry the and deliver the message. Oh, because like, how are you going to not know what's inside the pamphlet? And it's not the same every time. Correct. For people, really and they came out weekly. You, they I came out weekly. I didn't realize that because I, I, we've had several. Our old house, we had Jehovah's Witnesses here all the time. I don't know if we were like, I, I don't know how that yeah. works. <laughs> it's like a paper route. I don't know like, <laughs> how that works. But, but, any, but they would always come with the the little pamphlet things. But I just assumed they're the same ones every time. No, should have gotten a collection man weekly that's that's oh wow so you have to learn what's in them and who is writing that content um so it there's a like high like the where they publish the the, the where they publish the watchtower is somewhere in new york and there's just like this whole system so it's for everyone in the whole country gets the same one every week Yes, so okay. we're all oh, I didn't know so that. every jehovah's witness in the entire world is basically world. delivered and delivering the same message. That's how the the Pentecostal churches, That's the Church crazy. of God in Christ, it's like that. Like they'll have they have a Sunday school book. Mm-hmm. Like everybody uses the same Sunday school book, so everybody's teaching the exact same lessons. That's crazy. That's cool. I mean, that's, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's very. I we've kind of talked a little bit um, about like our religions and how like. From my experience, just growing up hearing like Pentecostal people talk about like Jehovah's Witnesses, it's like not in a positive light. Like they're mm-hmm. talking trash about them. Absolutely. Same. And they just don't like Same. the Pentecostals. I feel like don't get along with Jehovah's Witnesses. But we've come to find out that there's a lot of similarities mm-hmm. in the religion mm-hmm. as far as like maybe not what they believe, but like how strongly they believe. a lot of similarities. Like what's very interesting about Jehovah's Witnesses is like we were brought up like we delivered the truth. Like it is the truth. So any mm-hmm. a church like we I was scared to walk in to a church because I was like oh I'm gonna be destroyed like the devil's gonna get on me like I was literally scared to walk into a church do you remember when you came to my daughter's um baptism yeah and you were like standing outside because you were so nervous to even come inside the church because it was the Pentecostal church Mm. trauma (laughs) trauma And the whole time, and the, she's like, like freaking like, out, like nervous the whole yeah. time. Drama. Like, don't tell my mom I'm here. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, I so I kind of want to circle back to a couple things. <laughs> a lot of things. We just just get comfortable. Um, <laughs> okay, the first one is. Um, okay, so you you said something about money at one point. Like, do you have to pay something before you can get baptized? No. No. Do you have to pay something after you're baptized? No, so you don't have to pay anything at all. So it's a voluntary contribution. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a dollar, whether it's nothing, whether it's a thousand dollars, it doesn't matter. It can even be, you know, anonymous. Like it does not matter. But all of that goes up to New York, and that's why we're able to publish 
Mm-hmm. Let me say that again. That's why they're able to publish. There you go. <laughs> their article. I get what you're saying. That's interesting. I feel like. I would pay any amount of money to not have to go door to door. <laughs> there is Listen. nothing <laughs> that so, you could do no. to convince me to walk <laughs> to a stranger, to knock on someone's door and be like, let me tell you about the Lord. Listen, it like, is quite I would just traumatic. cry. I would cry. I, I would just pass out. I would just cry. cry. Throw up. I, I don't <laughs> like leading teams meetings. Okay? <laughs> Let alone knocking on a stranger's door no. to be like, can I talk to you about the Lord? What? Yeah. So, like imagine doing that with like like a 14 year old. Like we, I mean, we're doing this at eight, seven. Like it, it, if we can talk, we're knocking on doors. We're, you know, having the brochures, like the whole nine. So is there any question of safety in that? Because I, I know just, I, I like to listen to a lot of like anti-MLM content too. Um, and I know like there's a lot of MLMs that do door-to-door sales essentially, right? Like Kirby vacuums and things like that. Um, and a lot of people have reported being a part of these MLMs is, is aside from losing a lot of money, but is unsafe. Mm-hmm. And so like, like girls getting, you know, attacked or physically or sexually, or, you know, um, y- there's all sorts of scenarios. Is, is that a concern as a Jehovah's witness? So I think to answer your question, they, they do a really good job of, you know, you know, pairing up, having groups, like they pick a certain territory, you stay in that territory. Um, it's not just like women, it's not children. There's a mix. So there's men like, you know, you, you pretty much like, this is the street we're working. So we're watching each other go in and in and out of the doors of these streets. You know, we step back, they step back. I'm saying we because I, at the time I, I that's totally, my point of view. And we've done we've done the same thing anytime it's we talk. It's very hard yeah. to remove. So have that you part. like officially left the church? Because like in my church, in order to leave, technically, uh, you have to tell the pastor. You have to give a formal resignation from the church. And what are they gonna do if you don't? I mean, I don't think they'll actually do anything, but that's just like, <laughs> they, they got, yeah, excuse me, know. your ass better be in the pew because you did not you, give me a resignation. Or if you want to go to like a different church within like, like the same type of churches, you have to tell your pastor, like, I officially leave because X, Y, Z reason before you can join a new church. So formal. Yeah, it's very formal because they have to collect all these dues. So they have to know <laughs> where the money's coming from. <laughs> it's better have my money. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yes and no. And I'll say that because once you're baptized as a Jehovah's Witness, there's there's no there's it's no a, turning back. It's a blood in, blood like, out situation. Yeah, yeah, there's there's no turning there's no turning back. So to circle back at 15, 16, however old I was, I quickly realized like all these meetings, all of this, like this is a lot. Like I don't I don't wanna do this. Like I'm starting to, you know, I'm finishing high school i'm you know headed to college like i'm liking boys like the whole nine i don't i don't want to be held to having to go to all of these things all these meetings all these times so i went to my parents like i don't, I don't want to be baptized anymore like <laughs> let me can i take Undo it back it. <laughs> and they're like no like once you you know dedicate your life to jehovah there's no turning back if you decide that you don't want to be a jehovah's witness anymore we're going to consider you an apostate and you'll ultimately be, you know, disfellowships. Like, we won't be able to talk to you anymore. As your parents, like, we won't be able to talk to you. Like, no one from the Kingdom Hall will be able to talk to you. And as a 15, 16 year old, that's the only community I have yeah. because I couldn't have any outside friends. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, like, I got to stay. Mm-hmm. Well, OK, I'm going to stay. I'm going to sneak and do what I want to do. But I guess I have to stay. So I have not really, quote unquote, left to answer your question. But they, my parents know that I don't practice the truth or practice being a Jehovah's Witness. So do you agree with, like, once you're baptized, you can't take it back? Like, do you believe that? I mean, I understand from a, from a man-made standpoint, if you're dedicating your life to Jehovah or your God. It's not yours to take back. Yeah. Like, I, I get, get that. that I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get the, I get the, 
the, the con- I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying like, yeah. the concept. So are you considered an apostate or are you considered that now or no? And I don't exactly know what apostate even means. If we're, so, <laughs> we're just being honest. No, okay. it's, it's basically you're choosing your previous life over I've heard the term the yeah. life that you ultimately dedicated your life to mm-hmm. okay yeah so at that point you're my, my, in, in seeing someone get this fellowship you know it was oh my god it was you don't want to do that if you do that like it's it's bad no one's gonna talk to you so it's almost as like so i know in in christianity i feel like uh i keep saying christianity and i know you feel like it's, you know it's all apart and in, in how i was raised it was like hell and damnation essentially was used as the fear tactic and sin and all of those things to keep you in and then also what you were saying you know i feel very very strongly that the that fellowship is one of the like highest things used in any religion to keep people in because the same thing especially when you're raised like that in a fundamentalist lifestyle like you don't have friends outside of that like a hundred percent what you're saying um, and like for me, I you know I mentioned before, I want to do a whole episode on homeschooling because I was homeschooled to keep me away from other mm. non-Christians. Yeah. So and that was my parents' reasoning. So because public school, I was gonna be an awful human. So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> surprise, it's still good. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I, I was going somewhere with this. My my brain is just like not staying on track today. But I, I guess it is that the equivalent of hell for Jehovah's Witness is being disfellowshipped? Is that the fear tactic that they use? No. Do you feel like? No, that's because hell is what will happen if you die. And Jehovah's Witness is ultimate. They don't believe in hell at all. Right. That was like real life. Like you're going to lose everyone. Like no one, like you're, it's ultimately telling a 16 year old, you, your, your mom and dad won't be able to talk to you. Your sister, your brothers won't be able mm-hmm. to talk to you because they're baptized Jehovah's Witnesses. They're choosing that life. Mm-hmm. You're not. So they can't associate with you just like we can't associate with anyone that's worldly because bad association spoils useful habits. So if you're not Jehovah's Witnesses, you haven't accepted the truth. I feel like you that can't just hang out right off them. the tongue. She's like, bad. Yeah, what dude. was that term? Oh, baby. First Corinthians. It was bad. 1533. What? Bad association spoils she useful habits. First. Yeah, and that and that was our ticket. That was our parents' ticket or the ticket of Jehovah's Witnesses to get out of anything. Like we couldn't go to high school football games. We couldn't join any teams. We couldn't. I mean, we couldn't do anything with the people in our school, partake in any after school activities because that was bad association. Mm. That's crazy. I think the only reason I was allowed to work at Chick Fil A is because my parents thought I was a Christian. <laughs> place <laughs> literally little did they know that's where i met my first drug dealer <laughs> so chick-fil-a ruined me <laughs> um not the lord's yeah, chicken, not the lord's no, chicken. No. um so so if you hypothetically say you never got baptized mm-hmm. what would have been the outcome in your family dynamic that's very interesting that you asked that because I recently talked to my parents about that. Okay. My parents said that they would not have been able to hold me to the standards that they held me to. What does that mean? So it meant because I haven't dedicated my life to Jehovah, all those things that I could have done or would have done to get this fellowship, I would have been able to do and express those things to my parents and not be disfellowships because I wasn't baptized. Because you weren't fellowshipped in the first place. Correct. So if I, when I started having feelings for for girls, Mm -hmm. I was not able to express that to my parents because I was scared that they would ultimately disfellowship me, the congregation would disfellowship me and my parents wouldn't talk to me anymore. But That's if awful. I wasn't baptized, I could have been like, you know, my mom is, my mom is the, the homie. Mm-hmm. I could have gone to her and said, hey, you know, she cute. You know, yeah. <laughs> she got a what do you think bang. she would have said had you not have been baptized? She she would have been very understanding. Like my that mom is, is crazy. Is, my mom is extremely down to her. Whoa. Okay. That is wild. Hold the phone. That's wild. So your mom does not have any problem with homosexuality or anything. No, 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 no. no. I'm not saying that. Like she would, she would. You're like I'm too far, Jenna. <laughs> too far, Jenna. Too far. <laughs> she would. They would have absolutely had a problem with it. But my, 
she would not I think deep down inside my mom would not have judged me mm. in that initial like oh that initial don't tell anybody that like, I think that still would have happened because that's her community and you know obviously I don't want to have a child that likes you know same sex Mm -hmm. But also I think that deep down inside, like because my mom was not raised a Jehovah's Witness, she still knows what it's like to live outside of that world. Mm, and I you. think she would have been able to, you know, relate to how I felt. And even though she wouldn't have liked it, she would have, you know, responded in a way like, yo, you still my child. Wow. That's interesting. So if, you're, if your child never gets baptized, aren't they considered worldly or no? Yeah. So are the but parents it's not allowed as to bad as had they've gotten baptized Correct. and then so if been you can still hang out with your child, I guess is what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. You can still if you hang never out. got baptized. Yeah, you can still hang out with your child. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So is there any I know for parents in 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 how I was raised, there is like an actual like deep seated fear if my child, you know, because they do believe in hell that my they their fear for physical and literal torture for the rest of their life like they fear for their souls right is that do you get the same thing in as jehovah's witness almost the guilt trip oh, oh not just the guilt trip but i i mean like if you were to ask my parents they and they knew that i because i don't touch my parents about this at all so and if they knew that i 100 percent don't consider myself a christian i don't like you know i don't believe in the bible um i think if they were to hear that like they would be not guilt trip me they would mm -hmm. have probably honestly physical pain over the fact that they would think that i was going to burn in hell and they would actually believe that to their core that, that was what's going to happen my parents would just cry and not stop uh, so I think for my parents, it's they believe, you know, once they pass away, uh, you know, they're going to be resurrected and live on paradise on, on here on earth. Mm -hmm. Their hope is that they see their children there. But deep down inside, they know that they or they feel like they're not going to see their children there because we have not accepted Jehovah the way that they have. Mm -hmm. So they always bring that up. Like, we just want to see our children. So it's used more as a guilt trip, not kind uh, of. My, my, you know, my parents really, really, well, yeah. you know. My so parents I don't, the same. It's you know, hard. Yeah, you know, it's hard to, yeah. to, to know if it's really a guilt trip or, or if, if it's really, really love, you yeah. know. And I really think to down to the core that it's the love like they really are concerned that they won't see you that they won't see us on paradise you know yeah. living in a paradise here on earth and i know and your parents are the same right yeah i mean they uh, definitely like to this day my mom still says like purging you. the lord is purging you you're gonna the lord is purging you mean <laughs> Like getting all the bad stuff out. <laughs> well, I know what purge means, but I'm saying, how, do, how, how does, does the Lord, Lord purge you? <laughs> yeah, it's right here. I don't know. I don't know. Make it make sense. I don't know. I don't know. She just. What does she so consider they, purging? Um, I think I've, I've just been kind of probably going through like a bit of a harder time with like emotionally. Like my mental health has not been great lately. Yeah. And so that is instead of like almost acknowledging like maybe my mental health is just trash like this is god pur purging you of all the the negativity in your life kind of thing mm. okay but that's heavy or it's and i and i of like, religious trauma <laughs> but i kind of like feel the same way um that Brittany feels like i feel like she, like my parents genuinely fear for our souls mm -hmm. like to burn in hell mm -hmm. i i do too and I, and I think that's why you know you and i have talked about like even if my I wouldn't lie to them, like they straight ask me. I know they're not going to because they don't want to know the answer. But if even if they were, it, it, I mean, even if this conversation were to come up, I just don't even go there because I'm, it's almost kind of like a cruelty because I know that they believe what they believe. And I know that they genuinely will believe like my soul is in danger mm -hmm. of, of burning in hell. And then they're going to worry about my kids. And it's going to be this whole thing that causes them pain yeah and i know they're not going to change their mind they've had plenty of opportunity to and they believe what they believe um and my parents are both converts so neither of them grew up in the religion but they adopted it before i was born same same as you mm -hmm. um but yeah that, that's why i don't because i think 
it's a kindness not to. Yeah, I just tell my mom, like, you know, I I believe that you think that what you believe is the only truth. I believe it. Like, I'll tell her that. Like, yes. like, I believe you when you say that you believe that this is the only truth. I absolutely believe that. But, I like, I've told her, like, everyone believes that their truth is the, the one mm-hmm. and only truth. Yeah. Yep. So, if Jehovah's Witnesses consider themselves Christian, mm-hmm. do they consider a Pentecostal or Baptist or Lutheran as also going to paradise? Oh, worldly. They're worldly. Yeah. Oh, so only Jehovah's Witnesses are going to so be in paradise. Only Jehovah's Witnesses. So you also said that they don't believe in the Trinity. Uh-huh. What do they, if they believe in just singular, like not, I mean, just one even, <laughs> you know, even, even, even in non-denominational, it's like make it make sense type thing. Cause it's like yeah. three in one, <laughs> like, three headed dragon. I don't know what the heck, like <laughs> what? <laughs> Anyways. So it's uh, God. God's Son and the Holy Spirit. That's, just, that's the same that's thing. That's the same thing. Three separate entities. Not all of them are one. Like three oh, so they separate. Made it actually make a little bit more sense. Yeah. Three separate entities. It is God. God's Son and the Holy Spirit. Not they're all one. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And, and that actually makes a little bit more sense. And the, um, you know, if, you, if you're given both options, are apples to apples, <laughs> one has a hellfire and three people in one. <laughs> the other one has either A, you just rot, or B, rot. you go to paradise. And there's three separate people. This one may be swimming out <laughs> so far <laughs> in making sense. Not to mention, let me let me also add that you know there are there there is a heaven. So Jehovah's Witnesses do believe that one hundred and forty four thousand will go to heaven. So Why the remaining number? it's in Revelation. Yeah, it's in Revelation. So the hundred and forty four thousand will go to heaven, and then everyone else that makes it through Armageddon are resurrected and then ultimately live here on par- on earth in a paradise. And that's the Revelation. way it was designed before. We the whole it. Adam and Eve debacle. debacle. And I've also always wondered if Adam and Eve could fuck stuff up with like a bite of a, a food. How are the millions of people that are dying in, in this new paradise not going to fuck it up immediately? Because that's fair. Because I feel like we've <laughs> tried this one. <laughs> Start to so, sound a little bit familiar. So, so my question to you would be, what do you believe now? I know that's a loaded question. Mm, that is a loaded question. And, and it can be, I don't know, or you're just questioning. That's that's fine too. I'm I know for me, I mentioned it before. Like I I don't I, I'm still definitely a lot in the deconstructing and figuring mm-hmm. out. And I, I don't know if I could even say what I do believe right now, but I could say kind of what I don't. Like yeah. I did earlier. So I mean, what do you think in that aspect? So I, I don't believe in organized religion. Like mm-hmm. I, I I've looked at it, I've dissected it, I've tried to understand it, and I and I don't get it. I have my own personal relationship with God. Mm-hmm. But there are some things that I like don't believe in. So Jehovah's Witnesses, you're raised you know, pagan holidays. So there's no Christmas. Mm-hmm. There's no Halloween. I, I, I still believe in that. Like, I'm not, I don't believe in ghosts and goblins. Like, I don't want all <laughs> that shit around me. So, like, I'm not partaking in Halloween. I'll do a costume party. But, like, I don't really believe in, like, Halloween. I don't mm-hmm. believe in Christmas either. I don't believe Jesus was born on December 25th. I believe that that is a pagan holiday. Like the, uh, so do you, I, but do you participate in the pagan part of it? Because no. like the gifts, trees, none of that? No. So I don't put up a tree or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do like a seasonal gift for, you know, my team at work or something like that. Um, someone really special, if they want to exchange a, a seasonal gift, I'll do that. But it's not like I'm celebrating Christmas. Here's your Christmas present. Okay. And what about... Easter. Do Jehovah's Witnesses uh, is Easter a big part of Jehovah's Witnesses or no? So uh, the resurrection is okay. So the resurrection on night and fourteenth. So the Jehovah's Witnesses. Wait, the resurrection what? Um, Jesus was resurrected on night and on night and fourteenth. What, what, what is, is that? <laughs> is that English? <laughs> yeah, that means. What that is? Na- are you saying Nizen? <laughs> yeah, it's the day in the Bible that he was resurrected. 
Nines and fourteen. Yeah, listen, don't don't ask no, me I'm really, for the reasoning behind. Like, I don't, I don't really. I've just never heard I that just, term before. These are terms that are just drilled in my brain. Yeah, is so, it calculated differently? So like, it's calculated to translate whatever that day is every year. Every year, oh, gotcha. And after sundown, you know, it's ultimately the the Last Supper. You know, Jesus. Take, take my blood, take my body, keep doing this in remembrance of me. Mm-hmm. So not celebrating his birth, but celebrating his death because he gave his life for us. So Jehovah's Witnesses celebrate his death and ultimately have what they call the memorial. Is it around the same time as Easter? Yeah, it's close. Springtime-ish. Yeah, yeah okay. it's close. Is there any other holidays they celebrate? Uh, no there's no specific to jehovah's witness okay Mm -mm. so for you for you personally do you still believe in the what you'd call i guess a christian god like do you still believe do you believe any part of that do you just believe in a higher being in general or is there anything if you, I mean, if you don't mind, I, you, no, that's kind of I, I personal. Really haven't, no, but I really haven't thought about it. I, I definitely believe in a higher being. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, when I when I pray, I still do pray to Jehovah. Mm-hmm. Like Jehovah's still my God. Okay. Like Jehovah. That's what you call. Yeah. yeah. In in the Bible, that's that's God's name. Mm-hmm. So when I'm praying to my God, it, it is Jehovah. Okay. And so, what do you think about afterlife? I, I, I don't believe there is any. You think dead, that's it? Yeah. Okay. I think once you die, that that's it. And honestly, that's, that's and it's interesting because, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are like, oh, you don't want to live forever? No, I am, I'm tired. I don't, I don't. No, I feel that. <laughs> <Yeah, she's laughs> like, I was, no, seriously, I was on a plane with one of my friends. We were sitting in the exit rows. And so they, they got done doing like, you know, the demonstration. <laughs> And she's like, what would you do if the plane starts crashing? And I was like, I'm going to turn my music up. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to lean back. And she's like, are you kidding? I was like, the last thing I'm going to do while I'm on this earth is fight. I've been fighting all these years. I'm not fighting for my life at the end. I'm just going to accept my fate. This plane is going down. I'm going down. I'm, I'm going down in glory. My music is up. Jamming. I'm leaning back. Too bad this Everybody's dummy hasn't kicked out, in yet. But I'm just all vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Literally not fighting for my life. Turning on my favorite Luke Combs and I'm out of here. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I still believe in a heaven and a hell. Um, I don't know uh, like to what extent or like what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you believe in like a, a burning, like a, <laughs> like a physical, like once you die, like you go to a place that's literally on fire with a red man. Okay, with the red man. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Enough with the red. So I'm not sure as far as like the red. I'm not. I if I'm honest, I'm not sure what what I think that looks like. But I do still believe in a heaven and a hell. I don't know to what extent mm-hmm. that. I don't know. Let me. But I I sometimes think we have a, a friend of ours that passed away, mm-hmm. um, not too long ago. Um, I think. Sometimes that she's like just sitting back and she's like, wait till you guys see where the fuck I am. <laughs> like, you have no idea. Because <laughs> it's going to be it's just something completely opposite of what everybody thinks, you know? Like, <laughs> I saw a TikTok today that I thought was extremely interesting. So someone had brought up like, you know, if Satan did, you know, God so bad and he was like deemed to, you know, all eternity, like if, if he left... Like, why would he recruit other people to do the same thing? Ooh, do you, what was that TikTok? No idea. I told you to watch it. He's gonna, the oh, producer's gonna have to cut to it. Watch that. I wanna go watch it and share it because it was very enlightening. Okay, yeah. Whenever we, like, whenever yeah, we take another look. That's, yeah. I don't, what do you mean why he would recruit? I can't. Yeah, I don't understand. <sighs> Yeah, go for it. I have to my thing. 30 seconds. Yeah. Guys probably like these fucking weirdos. <laughs>
Like if if he did it, why would so, he? So uh, I can I can answer that question actually. Here, I'll, let me push. Oh, I'm still recording. I actually do know the answer. Unfortunately, <laughs> I would love to know. According that, to unfortunately. according to um, at least fundamentalists, so the the reasoning is that Satan is not the one doing the torturing. Basically, God takes the key. So okay. Let me back up. Let me start from the beginning. Yeah. Whenever, yeah, so I'm, I'm ten toes in. In, in fundamental, <laughs> so in fundamentalism, whenever uh, God casts Satan out, um, basically Satan was left to rule the earth, right? So he has what they sell, call dominion over the earth, and then he essentially rules hell as is, right? So when Jesus died, that's when he died supposedly because he had to go to hell to take the keys because apparently he can teleport to earth, but not to hell. So <laughs> he goes and gets the keys and then he takes them back. So now essentially Jesus has the keys to hell. So what happens in the after the tribulation, Satan is also thrown into that same lake of fire and locked up. In the in tech in the in the New Testament, um, not only is he locked up, but it, the thing that nobody ever answers is he's supposedly only locked up for two thousand years, and then they don't say what the fuck happens. <laughs> like then it's just free for all. Yeah. Who knows? But that's what they say that he's he's cast in the lake of fire for two thousand years. So technically, it's kind of God doing the torturing. What do you what do you think is in the afterlife? I don't believe in a heaven or hell anymore. I, I did at one point, but fervently, obviously. <laughs> um, I, I don't believe in that because I just can't, I can't make it make sense in any yeah. sort of capacity as far as the rule stick of who gets to go where. Okay, I get it. If you think, okay, Jeffrey Dahmer, easy, hell, not, not hard to figure mm -hmm. that one out. But then you talk about, okay, well, take take people having sex before marriage at some point in the in the earth that was punishable by death so it's just like okay well those people thought that those people were jeffrey dahmer ish a thousand years yeah, ago and so i'm like so they would have equated it to the same or they would have equated homosexuality to the same and i get that we're saying like okay this is all okay now but i'm like there's no consistency with what was right or wrong across all of time that's been documented and so I'm like, how on earth, like, not on earth, how in heaven would you have, there's just no way that there can be a, a, a yardstick that's universal. And so I, and that's why I personally just don't think there is a heaven and a hell. Um, but I, I, honestly, this is something I've really, really struggled with, especially lately, because I've been talking to my husband about the fact that, you know, as growing up as a Christian, you kind of always have that hope, you know, that like, this life is temporary like it makes things and earth hurt a little bit less you're like it's temporary it's a part of the trial it's a part of you know the test or whatever it is so you can almost justify it like mm -hmm. i can handle anything for a certain for, for a little by a little bit for eternity in heaven right um and coming to the realization at least for me that i don't believe in that anymore like i had like i was having just basically panic attacks like and and i know that sounds silly but it's i didn't even realize it bothered me that much until i didn't have it anymore that wow. i was like it was like once i decided like i don't believe in that it was just like it like really fucked me up honestly and so i'm like i don't know and i i still really can't answer that question like i don't know what i think happens afterwards but I would like to think something. I just don't know what. And the the reason something the reason I think that there is something and not nothing is honestly just because of a lot of the laws of science about like, you know, matter never being created or destroyed. And I just don't see how consciousness could be completely destroyed. I don't think there's like some rebirth body or anything. And okay. I, I I don't think that, but I'm like, but there has to be something. Yeah, I guess unpopular opinion. I don't believe in extinction. What? I'm just saying I don't. What? What? How is that related to anything? <laughs> <laughs> and how do you not? <laughs> Wait, because you said matter cannot be created or destroyed. I just don't feel like. And <laughs> well, show me, show me the T Rex. Where's the? I'm just saying. The Patasaurus. <laughs> I don't. You know, go ahead. Why are you laughing? I really, I'm serious. I just think it's interesting. I just feel like I don't, I don't think that like something would be created just to be destroyed, to go extinct. I don't believe it. I think that sometimes 
like there's there are things that have not been discovered by us that mm-hmm. we just don't see and i think i, mean, I just I, don't i, don't I will think, agree with that. i mean like at some point you know the world's most brilliant minds were saying that the earth was flat or that it was the center of the universe and now we're seeing like these teeny tiny little specks <laughs> what in the universe i'm like there's that's just selfish. It's human nature to be selfish, and I understand that because that's we always think everything revolves around us. But I'm like, bitch, you ain't. You're like an ant hill in the scheme of the not even an ant hill, <laughs> like in the scheme of the universe. Um, and so that's why I'm just like, how could we say what what is or what isn't? Um, but then I also I can't deny that I have had like personal experiences practicing Christianity or there are things in the world in general that, that cannot be explained. And I can't deny that either and, and say that there's no deity, there's no anything, there's no before or after a spiritual realm because I'm, I get first-hand accounts can be very unreliable because there are ways to manipulate that. But at the same time, like, how do you deny that I'm touching this table? Like if I'm touching the table, you yeah. know? And so there's yeah. stuff like that that I'm like, I don't know how to explain it, honestly. Um, I, I don't think it was because of, you know, this book written, but I do think there's something, I just don't know what. So Interesting. I've had to embrace the, I don't know. Yeah. And that's hard. Yeah. Three very different points. Yep. Yeah. I think that's interesting. So what made you want to ascend i know you haven't totally left your religion but what made you want to aside from i get all the meetings but when, when did you i guess make a clean like i'm not going to the services anymore or the kingdom hall or things uh it was probably right when i moved out i moved out at about 19 years old and it was mostly because i, I there were unanswered questions so I was really big into celebrating my birthday. Like I wanted to celebrate my birthday. That was the only holiday that I cared about. Mm-hmm. And there was n- there was never a good enough reason why Jehovah's Witnesses didn't celebrate birthday. So oh, see, I didn't know that. The reason Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate birthdays is because, oh my goodness, <laughs> uh, John the Baptist was head was asked for someone's birthday on a silver platter and that's how he died Uh, and that's how he died so someone went and got and cut and beheaded him i knew that bring me the head of john the baptist i had no idea it was that person's birthday it was that person's (laughs) birthday (laughs) and so jehovah's witnesses cannot celebrate birthdays because john the baptist head was given as a gift on a birthday that's crazy that's crazy crazy I don't even I just know don't feel like I, that's a good enough reason. That's not that a, you can't you can't your poor little baby never had a birthday party. <laughs> oh no. I've had birthday no, parties. No, I mean as a baby. Like no, as a kid. Yeah, nothing. <gasps> that I am like I am heartbroken. I yeah, that's fucking serious. love birthdays. <laughs> I don't really care as much about mine anymore now that I'm older, but mm-hmm. my kids' birthdays, oh my god, I go all out. Yeah. I love celebrating yeah. birth other, other people. I just love it. <gasps> that's so sad. But Jehovah's Witnesses are allowed to celebrate wedding anniversaries. So that becomes a pretty big deal. So, well, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a thing. Like, it's okay to excel, to celebrate a wedding anniversary. But to me, I'm like, I... That's the only time I get to get celebrated is when I get married. Like, I don't... Mm. Like, I I don't care that John the Baptist... You know, like, I... this I was born. You know what I mean? Like, y'all celebrate me today. Y'all created a whole not, person on this right. day. Aww. I'm not asking for anyone's head on a silver platter. I just want to blow out some candles. Yeah. So... Wow. Yeah. So I, hard. I, I couldn't stinks. get any answers. I was a little hot in the pants and I was ready to go out and party and just like live my best life with with no regrets or regards to having to get up and go to every meeting. So I moved out at 19 and I just hadn't looked back. Got it. Wow, that's crazy. So there wasn't, I know for, for both of us, we kind of almost had like a moment of like something that made us go like, wait, what? Like, did you have anything like that or no? I still do. You still do? Yeah. Like there when I have questions, when I have it the make them make sense questions, mm-hmm. you know, like I'll call my parents and I'll ask. And when they can't give me an answer, 
like I, I feel validated in that I'm making the right decision. Like I'm, I'm choosing to have my relationship with God, but it can't be through what I consider now organized religion. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I look at um, these, uh, you know, Mormon documentaries and they talk about like the polygamous lifestyles Mm -hmm. and you know how they fear leaving and you're just like just leave Mm -hmm. like just just leave just get up and go but you don't realize like that's their community that's all Mm -hmm. they know and so I was watching one of those documentaries I guess it was maybe like last year I watched it I was like oh that 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 holds true for the, the the religion that I was raising like mm-hmm. now that I think about some things I'm like well why would we do that like why wouldn't I just leave and then I'm like oh that was my community like that's that's all I knew so if I left I didn't know what else was out there mm-hmm. but now I feel like I've built an, a family outside of that yeah and you know that that's really what I need and I think that's one of the hardest parts about leaving religion or an organized religion is is exactly that is the is the community is like essentially held hostage Mm -hmm. you know if you okay we have what you want we have your family and your friends like come join us or be by yourself and I, I know like for me like I still I still struggle with like missing that community feeling like mm-hmm. everybody knowing who you are saying like having like these people that you see every week like I I still miss that aspect of it um and I think that's that's something that's I, I at least think is hard yeah what you it? have to almost mourn like yeah that changing your life yeah I mean because it's like the church that I grew up in that 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 um Rochelle and I both went to for a time is I was there since I was eight and so I was there from eight until 22 and so I 22 23 and um, that's a long time it's literally they these were what I considered my family and none of them talked to me anymore that's none of them. Sad. Yeah. None of them. None of them. Wait, talk- your parents don't. Oh, talk- I'm sorry. Yeah, my parents. Yes, my okay. parents do still talk to me. So, my, and it's not like I'm shunned in, in the same way. Like, mm-hmm. right? Like they wouldn't, you know, spit on me on the street. They would. They would say <laughs> hi. Um, but it, it's just like it's so kind of crazy. As, so, um, just to give you an example of like how like I'm not a part of it as all. There was the, the the pastor's family. I was very very close with them at that church, um, and we like. Spent our both of our families were super tight. Like we did everything together. We I spent the night, summers, all the stuff there. Um, one of their daughters still keeps up with me briefly, but the rest of them don't talk at all. Their youngest was like my best friend for most of my life, and um, he doesn't talk to me at all anymore. And so much so, so my husband the other day took my oldest daughter to go watch the new Jurassic Park, and so my youngest one, she's a little young for that, so well. Some would say my oldest, <laughs> she's only eight. She, someone would say she's too young, but she loves dinosaurs. No, yeah. Um, okay. So anyways, so they went to go see Jurassic Park. So I told my youngest, I'm like, hey, let's go to main event. Let's go have fun, blah, blah. So I did. I took her. I walked in and I see her like a wall of the people I used to go to church with. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't, I don't have the emotional capacity for this. So I, well, but it was who was once my literal best friend and his wife. And, and it was their child's birthday, um, which... Okay, cool. But they, but the, the weird part was, is I was like, hey, hey, what's up? And the first question out of their mouths was like, what are you doing here? What? Like, I'm like, bitch, did you think I came to crash a seven year old's uh, oh birthday party? I didn't, like, for you. I was like, no. Um, I'm like, my child, <laughs> like, I'm here to play. Like, isn't main event open to the public? Like, and so they kind of like, what are you doing? And I was what just like, that was the first question they asked me. And they said, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm here with my daughter. And then, um, you know, they said, oh, well, we're here for, they said their daughter's name's birthday party. And I was like, who? Like, I didn't, I didn't hear the name. It's loud at me in event. And they were, and she got offended and was like, my daughter, and then said her name again. And she was like, you don't remember my daughter? And I'm like, okay. It's, <laughs> he's out, and he'll get a <laughs> Well, then I, but then I kept, the worst part is I kept running into them, like, over and over, because we're all oh, in the same place. Yeah. Not just them, but then I run into another person. And it was like, I'm like, is this, did they pass out slips to tell people, say, what are you doing here? Because I got asked that by every single person that ran into me from that church. What are you doing here? I'm like, 
I would every, everybody that asked like, me out of it like not not to fuck with you. Like, <gasps> oh my god! Like I was getting like it was I was getting so irritated. But yeah, I think I think I got asked like a total of four times by different people when I was there, and I was just like, oh my god! But I wasn't gonna. I came this close to just being like, let's go <laughs> with my daughter. But I'm like, I'm not gonna like punish her for you know that she was super excited so we stayed and we played and we had a great time um but but i'm just saying that's how much of i am not a part of that anymore um that they completely don't talk to me see i feel like it, 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 at the kingdom hall that i grew up in even if i saw like if i go back home and i see someone in a grocery store they will still speak like oh you know hey how are you how are things like they they recognize who I am they know who my parents are so they still speak they're very like you said they're very nice they're very warm and inviting they just understand that I don't practice it anymore but you know I to give credit to them it's not like they're just like oh we're not fucking with you anymore Mm -hmm. they are still all very nice and you know they talk to you and speak and all that good stuff so I don't I I'm glad that I don't have to experience what you have to go through because that sounds like it's quite hard, especially you grow up with these people. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. we've we've been in that kingdom hall since I was seven years old. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, they to to be able to see someone and not speak to them because you know that's the choice that you made. That just feels that makes me sad. Yeah, I mean, and, and it is sad because, like I said, these were like some of my best friends, and especially when we first left. It felt very, very isolating because I didn't have a lot of friends that weren't in there. You know, I had friends like Rochelle and other people that were either at other churches at the time or just didn't give a fuck or because, you know, whatever, like about that. But it it was crazy how just instantly I stopped going and stopped getting, you know, invited to things, stopped getting all those. And I didn't even really leave on bad terms. So like, that's the crazy part. I didn't even make like a big like out like you know or anything um i essentially um they were switching pastors and we already lived pretty far and i was like you know now's the perfect time i had two small kids at the time and our practices were like five or six a.m and i was just like this is just too much with both kids and i was like so i was like i'm gonna step back with a new pastor coming in i'm like that's a perfect timing he wanted to bring his own staff anyways and so i was like okay great and so that's how i left so it wasn't even like a big dramatic thing they did a whole farewell for me and everything um and then it was just like it would be kind of awkward being like that visible and then still being like at the church so we stopped driving it was like an hour away so we stopped driving we went to a church that was like five minutes away from where we were yeah so it was i hadn't even left the faith at that point so like i hadn't left the faith i hadn't like anything i just literally left that one location and i was out wow yeah instantly that's crazy yeah I think for you in that particular church is a little bit different because like your your mom like still goes to those events and like mm-hmm. I know you do sometimes so you kind of like so I uh, show up and they're fine with you I feel like well I haven't gone in a while and yeah. I don't plan to go back um I think maybe pre-pandemic I went mm-hmm. um and then I think I went to like one service and it was like an outside service it was like right in the middle of COVID and one of the ladies was like walking towards me and she didn't have a mask on um and i had on a mask and she's like oh she like walked towards me to give me a hug and she's like oh take that mask off you don't need that and then i completely like did not hug her and i was like no i'm good here <laughs> um and then just to see their response to that and like how irresponsible they were mm-hmm. and then some of the things that they were like sharing on facebook yeah. i'm like i uh, cannot yeah. stand behind someone who Mm-mm. same that. and i i like had a lot of like i was really into that church i really enjoyed going there yeah but after seeing a lot of the like leaders in that church make like certain comments that were either like judgmental or racist or biased or whatever you know whatever it is i just was like yeah i'm good yeah Yeah, and i just never went back i feel like covid changed a lot for me as far as like it then became from me being a, a kind of like cut off if you will to me being like um uh, i wouldn't talk to you even if <laughs> like i wasn't so it came yeah. like i kind of it kind of almost helped me not like mourn the relationship as much anymore because i saw like same like seeing all the stuff during during covid and election and just black lives matter and just like all of the things at once that were going on it was just like no i don't want to be associated yeah, with you people anyways exactly. so that's crazy i mean and so I, I know I'm we're, we're probably gonna have to split this into two ones. 
I, I know that. But no, that's that's not that's not a bad thing necessarily. But um, I I know you were wanting to talk more about like the actual Kingdom Hall and like what 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 all that entails. What does that look like? Uh, I mean, the the most that I remember is just the amount of things that we had to do. Like mm-hmm. it, it I, mean, I felt like we were just there all the time. Uh, if we weren't there, we were doing things at home around it. And so ultimately, I just felt like it was basically, this was all that we had. Like we, I mean, it was schoolwork. It was Kingdom Hall, learning about the Bible. And I really felt like I just missed out on a lot of like childhood. Mm-hmm. And because of that, that's when I just like, I, once I got out, I just hit the ground running. So I haven't, I can't recall ever seeing like, I can't recall ever seeing like a Kingdom Hall church. Like, what does it say on the outside? It says Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, are they like big buildings or are they all like No, so that's very interesting because, you know, like these big churches that are huge, like they are, they look like houses and you have to actually like look for it to see it. And I mean, the the signage is small and minimalistic. You know, the buildings are very minimalistic, but they're everywhere. Like I could Google Kingdom Hall right now and probably 10 would pop up in a 20 mile radius. How many people go to one Kingdom Hall, like on average? Are we talking about like thousands of people at one? No, 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 no. Um, hundreds, probably make it be a hundred at 200 max, I think. So not, so not super like big. Huge. No. I'm, that's super interesting. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't, I, I really can't, like, I can't remember seeing a Jehovah's Witness, a Kingdom Hall Jehovah's Witness in the church. Are the insides minimalistic as well? Yeah. So it's a stage. And they just have rows of chairs. Like, it's very, I mean, just very plain. Like a a pop-up, almost. (laughs) Well, do they have, like, classrooms and stuff, or? So, in the Kingdom Hall that that I I was raised in, there was a stage, and then there was maybe 20 rows, like, 10, you know, 10 seats long, two columns, 20 rows back, and then there's two back like classrooms and when we did our theocratic ministry school when we learned to go out and do door to door we would break up in classes and do like groups Mm, like you'd either be like on the main like in the main area or or you would go into like one of the two back rooms that's interesting oh i'm sorry you have a picture no i just googled there's 8.7 million jehovah's witnesses in 240 countries and 1.3 million are in the u.s that's crazy i numbers had no are, idea those numbers are much higher than i they're much higher than mm-hmm. i would have thought Imagine. okay I, like i know you've been talking a lot i don't care i just i have to know about the theocratic <laughs> ministry <school. laughs> yeah i, I have to so know interested in knowing about this school uh so it was for us it was thursday night and you basically um first does everybody go everybody goes even children even children okay every single time so i mean babies three-year-olds four-year-olds you're you're meeting five days a week okay Mm -hmm. so um you basically get this pamphlet and you read through the pamphlet and it talks to you about or it teaches you like just how to go out and have like open conversations with people about the bible so not only are you learning like how to you know ask open-ended questions and get conversations started but you're also like drilling bible into your head so like what if they ask this question like how do you respond like type things and you basically do it based on so you and i will go and say like they'll say okay you have talk number one and it's on this subject and you've got five minutes to present what good looks like. 
And so, you know, I would ultimately like pretend like I'm knocking on your door and you would answer <laughs> it. <laughs> you love the role play. <laughs> I love it. And you basically just have like this five minute conversation and they clap and then like the elder gives you feedback like in front oh of the congregation. God, so good. Like on like how to do better, like what you did well and, and how to do better. And it's like so Bible like, based feedback. Training. Okay. Yeah. It's basically like training. So I, I have so many questions. <laughs> okay. So what, I need to know like what type so, so what's it's like if someone's like, Oh, I don't have time today, do they tell you like what to say in that instance? Yeah. What what do you say? Oh my god. <laughs> I need like, to know. Oh, I, right? <laughs> is this just me? No, I I don't even remember. It you can role play. You want to knock? <laughs> I'll, be the, I'll be the customer. <laughs> you want to buy some pizza? <laughs> <laughs> but they basically, you know, I, I can't even remember how it goes. I really don't. But, I mean, they, they talk to you about, you know, I know, I, I understand you might not have a, you know, time or whatever but and then it's basically just like i'm basically ignoring what you just said and i'm gonna talk <laughs> you know i'm just gonna yeah. keep talking so okay so give us a, your best tips this is gonna be the best part of the whole video of how to get a jehovah's witness off of your doorstep <laughs> i want the top three top three top three things Listen, I, I don't think... <laughs> I'm going to put this on the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that people under... Like, people will portray via TV, like, the Jehovah's Witnesses are, like, hella aggressive, right? Like, they're like, no, let me talk... Like, chasing you down. <laughs> like, you know, we've seen all the memes and, like, you know, how they make fun of, you know you know Jehovah's Witnesses and movies and things like that if you genuinely say like I'm sorry like I'm not interested like they're done okay they close the door now it got a little aggressive like I will I remember just like my mom just like continuing to talk oh no I mean, well, people would be like literally like okay, I'm slamming the door on you but I think since then, but this was a long time ago. I think since then they've recognized like, okay, the world's a little crazy. <laughs> like you can't go too far. You know what I'm saying? Like if someone says they're not interested, like back up. Like we're done here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I think that's where the safety, like we talked earlier about the safety. I think that's where the safety part comes in. Is this is it crazy? That's yeah, that's that super. Yeah, my experience. Anytime like I told you we lived on the street, I was just a hothead every time. Um, but we, but I thought that I can't even make my words. They were they were always super aggressive. I yeah. felt like like they used to do um, like grocery store like parking lots. I've seen that. I've seen like that they would before. literally like hunt people down like. While they're like walking to their car with their basket, with their groceries, or putting their baskets up, like stopping them literally, like, hey, let me talk to you about Jehovah's Witnesses. It's crazy. So, how does it differ from? I'm just because I know Mormons do mission and they go like on for two years. Is there anything like that, or is it just always the once a week? So, what is mission? So, I, I, I'm, I don't entirely know all of it, but I know, so Mormons, I know they do two years and it's after, I think their baptism, like when they're a certain age, they get sent out on a mission where they go to like another city and do the door to door thing. Um, the same, this, not the exact same, but the same thing, but they do it straight for two years when they hit a certain age. Um, but it sounds like Jehovah's Witness is just every Saturday thing. Yeah, it's no, we're not sending you off. You're going to go with your family. You're going to go with like your trusted system, whatever. You're going to go with the people in your congregation. But, and, and it's not just on Saturdays. Like they go, like people would go, you know, on Sundays. They would, you know, do it, you know, during the week. Like it's an everyday thing. Like they're out there every day. We need to get like a, an, a Mormon or like an ex-Mormon on here. Yeah. To find out all of their secrets. I, 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 I feel there's, like there's so many. I feel like there's a lot of like um, Mormon content. I think I feel like a lot of people are starting to leave that faith that are like younger. Yeah, because I see sure. a lot of that content coming up, like like ex Mormon content and things. Yeah. Um, but like I know Mr. Mr. Atheist is one of the ones I listen to. Um, I listen to a lot of his, and he's he's a former Mormon as well. So, 
how will you raise your children? Well, uh, that's a great question. I will not be having any to raise, so... Problem solved. Problem solved. That was a super easy one. But if I did have children, it would just be... I would have them walk in the faith that I walk in. Like, hey, we're going to pray. Because I do. I believe in prayer. I believe prayer works. I believe, again, having a relationship with Jehovah. But I'm not going to... There, there will be no organized religion of any kind. Like, I'm not going to. Because I feel like that was almost shoved down my throat. And if I were to have children. Like, I'm, I'm first of all, I'm too fucked up to have children. So, like, I, like I'm like i still trying to figure me out. Let alone, you know, worry about, you know. Another human. Another human that I have to take care of. But I, I'm just big on, you know, just be a good person. Like, mm-hmm. can you just be a good person? I was telling Donna on one of those, like, our, on one of our episodes that, like, that for uh, for us, now that we don't, you know, practice any sort of religion at our house, it's, like, kindness is kind of the the way we measure everything. Like, okay, why don't we murder? Well, it's not kind. Like, right. Why, yeah, you know, why don't we hit our sister? Well, it's not kind, you know, and why don't we steal? You know, it's you can kind of always, I feel like, find a moral ground on, like, what, what is kind. Yes. Um, and I don't think you need a deity necessarily to, to have morality, so... But yeah, anything else that you that you any other nuggets of Jehovah's Witness <laughs> truth you want to tell us? No, it, you know what's crazy is like as soon as we're done, I'm gonna be like, oh, I should have said this and I should have said that. <laughs> but no, like I feel like we got a we lot. Went in a yeah, I learned, I yeah. learned a lot. I think the only question I don't have answered is not not even necessarily from you. Like I feel like if you look at many different denominations and in, in, in religions it all comes down to money and, and control mm-hmm. right but i but i i have you haven't really i don't feel like you've said anything negative about it other than um being there a lot but it sounded like you didn't have to pay things no um or anything so i'm just like i'm curious if you think like, do you think that they're a more moral religion or do you think that there still is some sort of catch, I guess, to the organized part of it? I do not believe in any way that there's any catch. I really do believe that this is a moral organization. Like The rules that they have put in place is ultimately for your safety. So no sex before marriage, obviously, because we don't want you to contract any diseases or this or that. I know, you know adultery do the right thing don't cheat don't steal don't kill like all of these things Mm -hmm. things that'll keep you safe it just suffocated me like it just became too much and even talking to my parents now like they express that they even recognize that and they evolved and it's not five meetings a week and you know it's because they understood like wait okay let's take a step back this is a lot Mm-hmm. And so they've actually scaled back and then children are allowed to participate in sports now. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, like they've really evolved with the time. So honestly, there's not a single thing bad that I can say. It just when it comes to religion, one, organized religion's not for me. Two, that's just not for me. Mm-hmm. But if I had to have a organized religion, Absolutely, but that's also the only religion that I've ever known. You've you ever know? known, yeah. And I, I feel like that's really true in general of all religions. I think that if people do go back to a religion, it's really common that they go to the one that they were raised in, because um, there's like almost like a nostalgia and a comfort in that. Um, so it definitely makes sense. But and I know there's a scripture too. Um, about like train a child in the way they go and when they're older they will not depart from it and it was one like yeah. I always heard um, and if you think about it though it, it does make sense in the fact like if you are like indoctrinating kids at an early age into anything doesn't really matter what it is it's always going to be there in their head yep. um, so I think that's also why like deconstructing religion can be so painful um, because it was literally woven into a part of your being absolutely so. like, I mean I'm thinking less than two years ago and i'm 40 like can i say that (laughs) you're like like i imagine like if there were 
like a video camera in here and I'd have a scrambled face like <laughs> oh my god a scrambled face <laughs> mask your audio but you know I say that like even even at 38 like I'm literally like nervous about walking into a, a church so to answer your question like or to comment or piggyback on you yeah like deconstructing that that's that's a lot and that that that's a lot yeah it, it's a lot and it's hard and and i i also like firmly believe that like about kind of almost like informed consent like you now have the ability to choose like you now are old enough to say i've done this i've done this i've seen both sides and here's what i think here's what i believe i can make my own decisions um but i think whenever you have children in an organized religion like that really early they, they that choice is taken away yes and then it's something they struggle with their whole life yes. against their will yes and so like i think i think that's also something that's like important to to like consider in it all but then also like re- then respect people's you know beliefs or or whatever they have afterwards i think is important because i know i'll see a lot of content especially like when i was first starting to like question my faith i started watching um different like deconstruction or which were mostly atheist channels like on youtube Mm -hmm. and a lot of it kind of felt like they were either like calling me stupid or they were like i say me like you know for being a part of religion um, or like that the whole world should be atheist. And I, I don't, I don't believe that either. I think that it's religion in its core, I think does bring a lot of comfort to people mm-hmm. in, in life and in death. And like I said, it makes the pain feel a little less painful. Um, and some people like they need that in their life. And I think that's totally fine. Like having like this, that was one thing that was kind of hard for me is like okay because i would still pray and i would be like what am i even like but it was like almost a compulsion because it's like that's what yeah because like when i was stressed when i was this i would pray and then it's like now like it almost made me have more anxiety because i'm like what it's like what do i do with my hands like you know like (laughs) what do i do like who you know if i don't even think there's someone there like um so that was kind of a hard weird trend weird thing for me um but i I think that all that the whole thing was to say like i think as long as people can have informed decision making, like they can know their options and get to make a decision for themselves, yeah. not one that was made for them, then by all means, as long as you're not hurting someone, believe what you want or you need to believe. So that's kind of my thoughts on it, at least. Yep, yeah, I agree. Not that anybody asked. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Well, thank you so much for teaching us. Yeah. Thanks about for stopping by. This, this was, was the most fun. fun. Thank you very much for having me. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining us and we will see you guys on our next episode. Bye.